Hello, everyone. I am technically one minute early, but I wanted to jump on and just say hey to everyone that'll join us here, and this will be recorded so people can watch it later. Uh, I'm really excited to give you guys a tour of the Knights Forge Innovation Lab here at University of Liggett School. We are an independent school in Michigan. We are in Gross Point Woods, the suburb of Detroit, and I've been very lucky to work with Demco Interiors to help design and bring this vision of what a makerspace uh, innovation lab can look at look like for a school. So I'm really excited to sort of showcase the idea and the process. So it's four o'clock now, so I'm gonna get rolling. And very rarely after this, hopefully you'll not see my face. It'll be all the other cool things going around, but I definitely wanna say hi. I'm Nick Provenzano. Some of you know me as the Nerdy Teacher. I'm the Makerspace Director at University of Liggett School and the Technology Coordinator for the middle school as well. Uh, I am going to give you a tour of the Knights Forge. It's our innovation lab. It's a an amazing space where students from 6 through 12 can come and build and design and create uh, for fun, for school, for projects. So I'm really excited to showcase all the cool things that are going on here. So as sort of a preview, what I want to give you a heads up on is that we're going to look at three different spaces. The idea behind this innovation lab was to take design, prototyping, and fabrication, and make them physical spaces so the students can actually be in those spaces for the part of their design process. Well, one of the things that we uh, really pride ourselves on here at University of Liggett School is that we are project-based and that design thinking is really important to us. We want kids to understand how to solve problems, how to explore, how to build. And to do that, I really wanted to create a space that really represented that. So I worked with Demco Interiors to create an idea and they helped bring that idea to life with some wonderful drawings and collaboration. So uh, we're gonna start off in the design space. So this is room one. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and showcase some of the things we've got going on here. Here we go. So this is the design space. One of the things that was really important to me was to have as many open surfaces for students to design on, to create, to brainstorm, and do all of those things. So for me, one of the things was dry erase, whiteboards. So we've got whiteboards, we also have a smart board here, but the cool thing is that the tables, the tables themselves that we have here are dry erase tables. What I love about these, and these have taken off, kids are immediately drawing and sketching and taking ideas is the fact that they can design, create, erase, start over, snap a picture, erase, do it again, take it home, come back, and get down to those ideas. It's been a wonderful space for kids to do just that, design. And sometimes kids during uh, lunch will come in and just like to doodle and get things under their head. The very artistic types love to come in and do that. So the Dry erase tables have been an awesome addition to the space. We also have a nice monitor here that is using uh, a device, a piece of hardware, it's called Airtime. What that allows kids to do is to connect to the monitor wirelessly from anywhere. And that's great because you always want kids to have the opportunity to showcase what it is they're working on and they have digital creations and sometimes throwing it up on a screen can really help with that. Uh, another screen you can do that here is another smart board. Uh, this one is really awesome. It's currently connected to uh, a Raspberry Pi system created here. And what's really awesome about that is that kids can actually create games and run them on this RetroPie system. So they can build their own arcade games and code it and then put it all together. You attach it to the smart board here with an HDMI cord and then boom, the kids have access to all of those really, really cool things. Um, charging is also super important. Lots of charging stations. We gotta have kids have their devices nice and charged throughout the day. But one of the problems that we were facing in the school was this space did not have access to uh, outlets as much as you would like for a room like this. So I was able to get this really cool system from Bretford and it is called their Juice Power System and it all connects through magnets and then these guys here, these little hubs, you can actually plug right into the device, yoink, and it'll charge your device. So you don't even need your cords. And it's all magnetic strips that run throughout. Boom. So which is awesome about that is that 
if a kid should trip on it, it just comes attached and you can just attach it right back. It's really, really, really awesome to have here. Uh, in this design space, you'll have some kids messing around with um, hinky makies with a little controller keyboard they've made here. You got 20 makey makey projects for the evil genius. Totally, totally worth having in this space. Uh, we have tons of books and magazines and things going on here as well. Uh, Hello World, Magpie. Uh, this one is popular, The Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Can't go wrong with that one. Um, Make Magazine, uh, Projects, Adventures in Python. What's really great is that all of these pieces are here for the students to use whenever they want. And we've got some Kano Harry Potter wizard coding going on. Uh, we also have our really awesome Oculus Go headsets. And these are our charging hubs right now. It's in a nice suitcase. And these have been used in this space because it gives kids an opportunity to explore and to create using Cospaces.io. And we've had English classes in here where kids took tours of exotic areas they would never be uh, able to go to in their life and then write stories using that as a setting. And having our iPads charged in here, having access to all of our dry erase materials, and then a full cabinet of more books to use for the design process is really, really important. This space is used during recess for those kids that love to sit down and design. This space is used throughout the day from teachers bringing their classrooms down here to utilize these tools. Upper school students from uh, 9 through 12 have been in here as part of design thinking challenges. So this is the first step in that process. So I'm really excited to showcase this aspect of like step one of our makerspace. But we're gonna head now to the prototyping room. So after taking those ideas, it's time to start to put them together. So I really wanted to have a space that kids could sit and get their hands dirty and just start to create. And so one of the things that I really wanted were nice solid tables. So I got these really nice solid wood tables from Demco. These guys aren't going anywhere. But then I also got these mobile ones. These guys are awesome because they move all the way around. They have pegboards for tools. They've got storage on the other side. I'm super excited about. We are rolling and constantly changing these over and over and over and over again because kids are constantly doing different projects. Uh, we have a cardboard project going on right here. We've got all of our arts and crafts stations over here. Uh, 3D pens are really awesome. The three doodler kids are constantly designing with uh, the 3D pens. It's really become something really awesome in this makerspace. Arts and craft. A lot of people assume that everything about makerspaces is all about super high tech stuff. My arts and craft supply stuff get used more than anything else and it's to create some simple, fun, lovely things. Kids all the way up through seniors in high school absolutely just love Play-Doh. It's still their favorite thing to use. And one fun trick that I learned, which I had no idea about, was that you can actually make molds out of Play-Doh and then use hot glue to fill in the mold and then it dries, you can just pop it right out and then you have this awesome little hot glue figurine or shade that you've created with Play-Doh. I don't know, these are seventh graders, they assured me it was awesome. Uh, lots of duct tape, duct tape projects are constantly going on and on and on. Uh, here's a student who's building a volcano and just using lots of hot glue and different arts and crafts stuff here. Uh, we've got a Raspberry Pi computer in a lunchbox. So this is one of my projects here. It's a Gremlins lunchbox. Uh, Built-in camera, tons of fun things here. This is one students uh, help put together here. This is a computer in a briefcase. What's awesome about this is that it's currently running Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi. So you can actually play Minecraft. And if you wanted, you could code Minecraft. Uh, so it's actually a really nice setup here for kids. We like to go to places like a library uh, outside of our school to showcase some of the things you can do with Maker Ed. Uh, another full cabinet full of more supplies. You got Makey Makey's, electronics, uh, Raspberry Pis. There, woo, Raspberry Pis. Um, we've got tons of other things going on really at all times. Uh, the science department in the upper school is giving each class a specific letter that spells science and they are designing specific elements from that class to match that letter. So here we have chemistry, 
And then we designed that and put that into the laser cutter. And what's awesome about that is that it was a cut that in and out. Um, actually, this isn't chemistry, my bad. That's chemistry, there we are. <laughs> Uh, it's a science. So we've got an E here. We've got a C. I think an I just finished. Um, little Bits has been really, really popular on our space as well. Uh, we've got a nice little system circuit here. I'll hit the button. There you go. The fan turns on. Light goes. Um, here's some more just regular arts and crafts, which is really nice. He's uh, got herself a little fall river scene here with rocks and yard and stuff like that. Uh, what's really great is that the furniture is all very movable in the center and the stools, these awesome uh, orange stools, make things a lot easier. The kids are constantly fighting over the wobbly chairs. They really, really like the wobbly chairs. Um, I think I need to get more wobbly chairs. I mean, it becomes sort of madness <laughs> with how much they fight over the wobbly chairs. The uh, space also features uh, 3D printers, uh, which is really, really, really important for me. Um, this is a finished job of a skull for forensic science class. This forensic science skull here will be used in facial reconstructions. So we were able to print this in our Dremel DigiLab printer here, and it took about a day and a half, but this beautiful skull was created so that the students in the upper school can use it for facial reconstructions. Uh, we got a frog going on here, and we have storage, awesome storage solutions that was able to help out with Demco here to hold all of our filament. You can never have enough storage. It's probably the thing I've learned most about makerspaces is that you need more and more and more storage. Um, it wouldn't be a makerspace without a gigantic box of Lego. I mean, you got to have as much Lego as you possibly can, so it's really important that you have the uh, amount of space to host things like uh, Legos and then the storage spaces to keep them. So it's nice to have storage so you can place sometimes projects that kids are working on, uh, whether it's our soldering irons and other things like that. So storage has been key and as more and more kids use it, the more and more I have to get creative to find storage. So our prototyping space is constantly busy after the design space is done. So the things that you're looking at in this space are these nice solid tables that allow the kids to do their sort of, I don't know, mess making work. And I love it. Um, a dirty maker space is a well used maker space in my opinion. So I think that works really, really well in regards to how much your maker space is being used. And kids are really great about respecting the space and then utilizing it over and over and over again. So I'm going to jump to the third room, the final room, the fabrication space. So fabrication space will look really familiar to some of us that uh, had wood shop growing up, that actually took classes that involved uh, making birdhouses and such. So this third space is a space that's really being used for some big projects in the high school and I'm really excited to share, but this is a standard space with pretty standard tools that will be used, drills and miter saws, uh, hammers, and we've got some desktop CNC machines here that are really, really nice. Uh, these are the Carvies. They are from Inventables. And we just finished one here. And this is a new sign uh, because headphones uh, are needed in here. They have to be used because it gets really loud in this space. So we've got this space because we have saws and table saws and belt sanders and we need our masks. And we have a gigantic X-Carve CNC cutter here. So these are all for big time projects that kids are working on. One of the best, most used items in here is our laser cutter. Let's take a look at that. We can turn it off so it's not so loud. There we go. And there's the eye. That's the eye I was talking about. For science, it is done. Look at that, nice. So the solid, again, tables that we're using in here are very, very important um, part of the additions to the makerspace that we've created. Uh, these tables just give us the space underneath for storage. Again, lots and lots of spare wood and scrap wood. Uh, but what it allows us to do is not worry about breaking tables and moving things around. Uh, we have a staining station over here, which is really, really, well used, and we also have some epoxy. We've been doing some inlaying for kids with their projects. 
Uh, this is a really cool one here. So the students in an engineering class are designing this cart that's going to hold these big batteries for the robotics class. And so a team of four students have been working and this will be part of their lid that they've created and it'll be used in the lid and it was lasered onto this wood just today. And so the kids have built every single piece and I've spent time teaching kids how to use a nail gun, a drill, a miter saw. They've never used it before, but these are skills that kids are picking up in this space as part of a school project. And that's the part that's so amazing about this is that when parents find out that their kids are utilizing these tools, they're excited because they see how important it is for these students, their kids, to know what they view as almost basic skills. And that's key. We want to give these kids experiences using tools. And it's one thing to just to take a class and say, you're going to learn a saw. You're going to learn to drill. It's about what projects do you want to make and what tools can you use to learn and create what it is that you want. So having students come down in here, a senior, almost ready to graduate, use a miter saw for the very first time and get super excited about it is an awesome experience to have when created a makerspace. This has been a year and a half in progress and I'm really excited about what we've been able to accomplish so far in these spaces. I really want to thank everyone for uh, joining us in this session. It's really exciting to see you uh, join in and leave comments and things like that. Uh, this space is constantly evolving because every makerspace should be constantly evolving based on the needs of the students. So that's something really, really I want to stress to you guys is that while this is what it looks like today, it might not look this way in three months. It might not look this way in the fall because the needs of students are constantly changing and we want to make sure we provide them with the tools that they need to demonstrate understanding in the classes that they're working with. So um, I'll still be online a little bit after this to take any questions. Feel free to uh, shoot me an at message at the nerdy teacher. Uh, if you want to find out the type of cool projects that are also going on here, you can check out at the nerdy teacher on Instagram and you can see all the projects that are going on there in my uh, Instagram stories or uh, on some shared images on the Instagram uh, page. I document everything because I want the kids to see that what they create is valuable. And to be able to do that is really powerful for the kids to see their work shared as something that other people are enjoying and learning from as well. So please reach out to me. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Demco and Demco Interiors for helping make all of this possible. Um, if you see anything in this space that made you go, ooh, where could I find that? Definitely check out Demco.com uh, for all the awesome things that you saw here. And if you have more questions, please message me. We want to make this happen. Uh, I'm really excited that we're able to make the Knights Forge Innovation Lab uh, here at University Liggett something really special, one of the kind for the students in our community. So thank you again for taking the time to watch this. I really hope you enjoyed this, and I can't wait to do uh, some more of these down the line as we start to change and grow as well. So thank you for coming and joining the fun and this has been a nerdy maker tour i hope it was everything that uh, you needed so thank you very much and i'll talk to you guys later